back at it again and we, of course we got some more with charlie kirk it's always a pleasure to check out some charlie kirk and him destroying some of these uh leftists out here <laughs> always a pleasure but anyway like share comment and of course hit that subscribe button if you're new make sure you are following me on social media too those links are down below in the description box below all right and with that being said let's dive in the question i wanted to ask was actually on something you said earlier how you said the question of hierarchy is not necessarily that to get rid of elites but to just have better elites mm -hmm. The argument I would counter, and I just want to know your thoughts, is the way I see hierarchy is you can have terrible people at the top, theoretically, people that are working in their own best interest, people that are corrupt, you know. And yes, that will affect the people at the bottom, but the way I've always seen hierarchy, especially in America and some of the stuff I see today, uh, kind of goes back to what he said with lower wages. I'm sorry, I'm rambling. Um, what is your opinion on the idea that hierarchy should be designed more so around just making sure the people at the bottom benefit, regardless of whether or not the elites are necessarily corrupt? Well, yeah, that's a nice goal. How do you do that? How, that didn't really work well in the 20th century. Well, I was going to I was going to comment on that and that. And how can that be done? Like, how, how do you. You know. I. I I, I really don't see that happening. Some of the most prosperous points of America, a lot of people like to think back to it, things like the 60s and 70s. For sure. You had a very corrupt American elite. You had an American elite that was starting foreign wars. That was after World War II where the defense industry was I would was, disagree. Was I think Eisenhower big. was a pretty ethical president compared to I'm what not saying the, that an the gang of criminals we deal with now. I'm not saying an individual president can't okay, be that's fair. An, an, a non-ethical person. I'm yeah, but would you agree the 50s economic policy was more focused on the middle class than the lower class, right? Because it was about a, a, an industrial base. It was about making stuff here abroad. It was about having trade policies that allowed us to be able to flourish and succeed. So the question, so you're always going to have high, you agree, we're always going to have hierarchies. Yeah, oh, right? absolutely. Yeah, it's yeah, unavoidable. Yeah, okay, good. Because a pure Marxist would say we eventually can get rid of them. I think that's woefully utopian. Yeah. But the question is then, when you design a system, who should it serve? Aristotle would argue the middle class is everything. I totally agree, right? It's the people that don't commit crimes, they pay their taxes, right? They're not going to get fabulously wealthy in their lifetime, but they should be able to have a commitment to retirement, see their life improve, their kids should be able to get well-educated and live a nice and normal life and the society should be stabilized around that, right? When that middle class disappears and you get a permanent government addicted class too much on the bottom or you get too much of an oligarchy on top, then I think the entire system starts to shatter. So I think we're saying the same things in some ways, but my argument is that you're always gonna have hierarchies and I would love to be able to see leaders in the top of the hierarchy, the billionaire class, if you will, pander less to the needs, wants, and interests of some esoteric climate change propaganda from the World sure. Economic Forum, and instead say, hey, I have a lot of money. How am I going to use that money to benefit people's freedom and liberty and middle, middle class potential, not trying to turn off our energy supremacy or superiority, which is the dumbest thing and actually hurts middle income Americans and make your energy bills even more expensive, if that makes sense. So I guess you would probably Facts. agree then that kind of the difference between the 50s and now is that the middle, cra middle class has kind of been ground down on the yeah, totem pole. Yeah, intentionally, I think. Okay. Yeah. So then, and, yeah. We and I think it's a variety agree. of things. I think public policy, I think Wall Street's taken over our government. But also, I, I will say this, I don't agree with libertarians on a lot of stuff, but they are totally right on monetary policy. Our monetary policy has been a robbery campaign of the American middle class, of destroying the American dollar, of depleting our purchasing power since the 1950s. So, for example, in the 1950s, your dollar just went further than it does now. It yeah. did. It did. And that destroys middle income earners and is a rigged game against working people. Yeah, I do think the middle class is everything. It's everything. Um, and he perfectly described it there. Once the middle class goes, it, it all goes to the to the shitter, you know. Um, that is a fact. That is a fact. And I think there is, uh, you know, a bunch of elitists in Joe doing that intentionally right now as we speak. As we speak, and there's a bunch of leftists that make the excuse, oh, well, it's going on in such and such place over there, you know. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Could, would we be affected by what's going on in the world? Yes, but we are America. We are America. For example, when it comes to the oil, why are we going to the Saudis for oil when we have the capabilities of making it ourselves? Why are we now going to Venezuela because the Saudis said, uh, <laughs> eat it. Why are we now going to Venezuela for 
the same thing when we could do it here that doesn't even make any type of sense like we're, we're, we're going to go somewhere else to get the same product right and use even more gas to do so pollute this planet even more since that's the whole thing we're going to pollute the planet more to do something that we could have already done but you know we can't do it in front of like these climate activists or something like i i don't i don't understand that is anybody else like scratching their head at that like that, that, that just doesn't even make any sense we're going to incentivize companies that sell most of their products here to move to china or taiwan or one of these other places make their products there and just ship them all the way back here or there, there are some companies who have a, have a product in Mexico, right? Mexico does this part or, or has all the, you know, uh, main components. Then they ship all the components to China. China puts all the components together. Then they ship it all here. And it's just like, wait, what the? F I, don't, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, doesn't make any sense to me. But of course, you know, these leftists, they don't, they don't have a clue about what's going on in this world. And they're just, hmm. I, I, I trust Joe and Kamala to, to do it the right. Anyway, let's jump into the second video that I got for you guys. As I was walking through the walk of shame, I think that's what they called it. Uh, I started, um, <laughs> I started getting like called from them, like being yelled at. And then eventually I got called Brown. Yep. So I don't know what that means. Cause they were saying how they were like white supremacists, how we are white supremacists. Then they called me Brown and I should, and I was on the wrong side. That's what they were saying. So then, it started um, making me think about it because then you also mentioned it in your opening remarks how they're always attacking us, but they're never doing this, yep. right? And so I wanted to like kind of know your your thoughts on that, on why is it that they don't have stuff like this? How they're always focused on just trying not to trying not to let us do this, but they're not focused on doing it themselves. Thank you for being here. That, that that's a wonderful question. They don't believe speech is a value. Facts. Their viewpoint is that speech is white supremacy. <laughs> if you read Jacques Derrida, who is one of the most um, cited, yeah, thank you, that's, that's well said. He's one of the most cited and influential postmodernist thinkers of the last 50 or 60 years. He had a term that I kind of blitzed through, okay, where he said the West is fallow, logo centric. Phallo, meaning the phallus, it is dominated by men. Logo, logos in the Greek, the truth, speech, reason, rational dialogue, all those things are replacement terms. Centric. And he said, this is the problem with the West. Men talking, that's the center. And so, therefore, in the postmodernist view, and you can read One Dimensional Man by Herbert Marcuse, you could read Intro to Critical Theory, by all of the, um, by it, Derek Bell didn't write Intro to Critical Theory, but anyway, they talk about how speech is not something that we should embrace, that it's dangerous, that it's a trick, that actually all of you are being fooled by being here, that the fact we're talking is actually Charlie being a white supremacist and hoodwinking you to believe that everything should remain the same. <laughs> I find that to be laughable and objectionable. That's a growing view in America. Unfortunately. That's what used to run Twitter. Doesn't anymore, thanks to Elon Musk. Elon Musk believes in speech. Praise God he does. It's a big deal. Thank God. Absolutely. Because every single totalitarian regime has two things in common. They must shut up people who disagree with them. Always. And they get rid of weapons. From Lenin to Mao to right now in the CCP to what Twitter used to be. And number two, they think they're doing good. If you interviewed Hitler a year before he committed suicide. And you said, do you think you're doing good? He's convinced he was doing the right thing. Everyone out there thinks they're doing the right thing. You know how you find out? You gotta defend your position against someone who disagrees. Speech. If you don't talk, you get radical very quickly. And that's what's happening in our country. Yeah. Um, I also think there, there was another thing that got rid of weapons as well. Um, but, you, you, you see the panic in these leftists when Twitter was taken over by Elon and all you kept seeing 
was Twitter has become a cesspool of hate speech and even uh, Elton John, who, you know, I kind of like the guy, but yeah, uh, you, you absolutely disgusted me with this one. But he tweeted out, you know, I'm going to uh, leave Twitter now because it, it's just a cesspool of hate and misinformation and disinformation and all of this stuff. And, you know, of course, Elon responded and said, hey, I'm sorry to hear that. You know, I hope I hope you eventually come back. Is there any misinformation or disinformation that uh, you can think of in particular that you're worried about? No response. And then somebody else had pointed out, because like I said, I, I do my best to monitor social media when certain things happen. And then I saw someone had tweeted and Elon responded that um, a lot of these celebrities don't make their own tweets. They don't they don't tweet their own stuff. It's somebody else that tweets it for them. And Elon was like, yeah, that that is true. And uh, hopefully that 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 will change eventually. Um, so I got to thinking, I was like, wow. Which makes sense, you know, some some of these guys and gals are, are really busy and whatever, but it's also devious and deceiving to have someone else tweeting for these celebrities because that someone else could have a totally different ideology than the actual celebrity. But when none of these celebrities come out and say anything against this stuff, I'm well, you're you're complicit. You are complicit. You you not saying anything is basically a cosign. You cosigned that tweet. And it lets me know it's disingenuous because there's nobody that's coming out and pointing out, oh, Elon, it's this stuff that is the exact misinformation. And it's this stuff that I found, you know, here's a list of things that are hate speech that, I, that I'm talking about that's rampant. Now, if the left was coming out and they were saying, hey, there's rampant hate speech and there's rampant misinformation and disinformation, and they provided a whole thread of, you know, examples of such, well, then I'd be willing to listen because I, I think as a reasonable person, anybody would do that. Oh, oh, you, you, you've actually got some examples of, you know, people saying all types of crazy stuff and blah, blah, blah. Now, while I don't agree with censoring folks, I'll listen. But when you just say stuff like that and, and oh, yeah, people are just going to buy it. No, we're not buying it anymore. And I think that's what the left is panicking about because they no longer can control the narrative completely. We're able to speak freely. When people speak freely, information gets passed from, from one corner to the other corner. And now the left can't stand in the middle and say, oh, oh, no, that, that, that's, that's not reaching them over there. <laughs> no, 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 uh, Uncle Trump. You're not going to be able to tell them over there that, you know, you're not the bad guy. We're going to tell them that you're the bad guy, but you can't, you can't tell them that you're not. So we're shut you down. Get out of here. They don't have that control anymore. And hopefully, uh, I think the Supreme court is taking up a, uh, social media case going on right now. I, I believe, I believe I could be wrong, but if not, they need to, um, about, you know, censoring and it's the gist of it. Censoring and, uh, how social media, um, Sites aren't held aren't held liable for what people say if they're just publishing people's opinion. But when, once they start like editing, then they're no longer a publisher. Um, so I, I hope that's changed. And if that is, oh, my goodness. Talk about the tables turning. The left has already gone into a whirlwind. Right. Uh, uh, when have you heard MSNBC or CNN talk about the Twitter files that have been released. Has anybody seen one clip of them speaking about it? One clip. I haven't. Maybe I missed it, which is possible. I, I possibly could have missed it. I'm only one person. I don't I don't have like a whole operation going on here. <laughs> okay. I have a few people, shout out to James and uh, everybody in the Discord that helps me, you know, come up with videos and, and things like that. But, you know, that that's that's the farthest this goes. So maybe I missed the video, but they're quiet. Nobody's saying anything because <laughs> they can't say anything. They can't control the narrative anymore, um, but they will try. They will surely still try. But anyway, y'all let me know what you thought about this in the comment section below. Like, share, comment, hit that subscribe button before you go. Peace and love. I'm out.